Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today I have got a little tutorial for you on three ways to improve your preliminary drawing before painting. Now this is gonna kinda go over before, during, and after making your preliminary drawing, making it the very best, strongest, best composition and tightest drawing you can, and that way a very good and strong and tight painting will follow. Now one of the steps is going to be using a composition grid. If you don't know what this is, or if you don't have one, then check around for links down below or up on the screen. Um, I just made a video about how to make one of these. This cost me, I think, about two or three dollars in about 12 minutes, and they are invaluable, especially for newer artists. I'm going to go over it a little bit today, but just check out that video. It's super fast, and it'll tell you all you need to know about this. So, I hope you learned something today. If you do, please think about hitting that subscribe button and make sure you come back over and over again. And it really helps me grow my channel, which is so super duper awesome of you guys. So yes, I hope you learned all the things. Thank you so much. Mwah. Love you guys. Enjoy. Alrighty, so step one is going to have to do with sort of before you actually start your drawing at all. This is going to deal with planning your composition. Now if you saw my tutorial a few weeks ago about how to make your own uh, composition grid, this is going to be key for this step. Now you don't have to have to have to have one in person, but it makes it much easier. Basically a composition grid in a nutshell shows you how to break up your canvas or space or drawing or whatever into a rules of thirds and the reason you want to do this is because these intersecting points have this funny way of naturally being appealing they naturally are ways places that the human eye tends to go in a work of art so if you can line up interesting points of your work with those it doesn't have to be exact but very close to those four points then what that's going to do is your viewer is going to come up and automatically like your artwork they're not necessarily going to go why right off the bat but subconsciously there's going to be something inherently appealing about your artwork so yeah that's uh that's great you really want to start off with that so like really quickly um you want to do this sort of before you plan it out. Obviously this is already a drawn on linen, but I didn't want to show you blank linen because that's nothing. But you can kind of see, and I'll show you it better, um, I, this is the initial photograph that I took. I took this photo and I liked you know, the placement and lighting and everything, and I realized that she's right in the very middle. And that's not very interesting just to have her squared up right in the very front and center. So I chose to do mine slightly moved over to the side. She slightly moved over. I had to invent a little bit of her hand right here. And then her nose and her nipple are gonna be right at two of the points. Now that is awesome because those are two actual protrusions on a human body. So wonderful that those are gonna be the points that come out are the points. Now obviously this size is a little bit big to use for these, but you can use, you know, you can draw your own using software if you have um, like a computer image that you're using. I would even recommend making a smaller grid. You can make one out of a much smaller picture frame that you can literally hold up to whatever image you have on your screen because I know I'm not alone that a lot of us paint and draw from our screen. So it really helps to have this planned out. Now you can actually make these and use these in real life and I highly recommend that. So if you're gonna work from, from your own photographs before you take the photo, you can kind of look at, okay, where am I going to want this to be? You know, and you can kind of take your photo accordingly or in life drawing, which I don't do it anymore, but when I was um, in college, especially in undergraduate, well, actually, no, both graduate and gra undergraduate degrees, we, um, we would bring these into our life drawing classes and literally, I mean, you don't hold it up the whole time, but you hold it up at first to kind of be like, okay, where is this model? Where do I want him or her placed on the canvas? And you kind of line it up and then you do your initial drawing like this and make sure that you like the placement with the model. And it makes it just an automatic way to kind of know where to go and know how to please your audience. And you can't get better than that. So anyways, yes, composition grids are a fantastic way of planning your composition. What do you know? As with all my models, I know what I'm looking for before they get in front of the camera, but I give myself plenty of options by taking a number of photos of the same pose from different positions, both from me and both from the model, because you would be surprised how different your composition can look once you started to map it out or once it's on the computer screen versus the three inch screen on the back of your digital camera. 
So once I've decided on a perfect photo and pose angle, I then go in and go ahead and apply my rule of thirds. Now I love this pose and I love the angle of her face and the angle of her body, but I don't like that she's completely squared up right in the middle. It's a little bit boring, her placement. It doesn't leave a lot of room for atmosphere. So what I've decided to do when creating my canvas is go ahead and change her positioning just a slight bit and make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting. I also, as I said, needed to add her hand and did some slight alterations, but I think it just made this very beautiful pose just that much more interesting. Aloha, welcome back to my outdoor bathroom for step number two. Now this step is going to be something that you can do during the construction of your drawing and this is something that you actually want to do over and over and over again and this is not a step for beginners or intermediates this is a step for everyone I use a mirror all the time constantly so I brought you here to my lovely outdoor bathroom mirror to show you just what I do I am constantly picking up my drawings and paintings the whole way the whole step of everything I am constantly coming up and bringing my work in front of the mirror and having a look now what this does is it reverses the image in your brain so that you will automatically see it basically with like new eyes your brain will read it like almost like it's a new image or document or whatever it will read it almost like it's brand new and you'll be able to spot out any inconsistencies so quickly it's unbelievable you'll be working on something for so long and you'll take it in front of you're like what I gave her two thumbs or whatever like it is insane what you will figure out so I actually will if my work is not too wet or too difficult you know too cumbersome I will just bring it right out here and stand in front of my mirror like this and just kind of look at it and reread it um, if it is then you know I also have small hand mirrors and you can literally just go up in front of your easel and you know look in through the mirror behind that works but I really kind of like this because I feel like I get the full screen so that is one of the easiest ways but seriously the most effective use that forever for life you should always be using a mirror to help check your work all right, and are you ready for tip number three of the super easiest ways to improve your drawing before painting? That is make your image the same size as the drawing you're doing. Wow, what an epiphany, right? I know. Some folks go ahead and print out their image before they paint from, which I think is great. Whatever floats your boat. Some people will print out small images so they have the composition. Some people will print out the regular size and lots of detail. I personally usually just tend to work from my computer because it's right there and I tend to work on a lot of projects at once and sometimes I start on things like very spur of the moment. Um, also I like being able to zoom in on things as needed without having to like shuffle around papers. So anyways for me I do from my screen. So if I'm ever wanting to check things I will just um, you know make my image the same size as my drawing and literally go through like old school you know how you when you're figure drawing you can use your pencil to kind of check angles or to check um, lines or whatever and this way you can do it the same way so I literally can check oh how wide is her face supposed to be okay is that right over there like what's the space between her eye and her chin da, da, da. you know you can go back and forth and literally check it at same size and that makes it very easy. Now, of course, certain things, we're talking um, artistic license here, if you're not familiar with that term. Artistic license basically just means, hey, you're the artist, you're making a piece of art, you get to do whatever you want, okay? So even though I'm making something that is very realistic and it's realism art and I'm trying to make her, you know, quite realistic, it doesn't mean that I and bound to stay by the photograph. In fact, if you want to make it realistic, you should not because photographs definitely skew your images and I'm going to show you. So for one, her hand is chopped off, okay? Now, I've been drawing and painting hands for 20 years, so I was able to kind of fill that in myself. Um, I will probably, you know, use my own hand as a reference or do something just to kind of make sure I get the shadows right when painting that, but, you know, you're going to have to do little things like that if you want to paint. You're going to need to make some alterations, make some additions, and let me show you something. So if you bring it on down, this looks like just a regular photograph. I mean, you can kind of see that she's coming out at you, but look at the size of that hand. Now, I know that looks big in the photo, but if I was to paint that hand that size, it would be like Hulk size. Like, it would look so weird. If her hand was all bigger than her head, it would be competing 
you know, for the attention. And I want this beautiful, this beautiful moment to be pretty much the focal point of attention, as well as this beautiful moment that is going to have an explosion of beautiful moments all over it. You know what I'm saying? So that is not whole canned is not what I'm going for. So what I'm saying by this is long story long. Um, if you have made alterations to make your piece a stronger painting versus a photograph, then don't, you know, don't go back and reset those. I, it's probably hard to tell, but I actually took her arm out quite a bit. I uh, widened this a little bit, widened this area. I gave her some definition. This is very skewed in and it gets really tiny and narrow and then she's got whole hands. So and you can still see it's coming out at you, but trust me, I've done quite a bit of alterations. I widened her hips a little bit. It was just very small looking. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is if you have done things like that to improve your piece, keep those. That is artistic license. You're the artist. You're allowed to do whatever you want. If I wanted to paint her green and with an arm coming out of her forehead, well, that is my painting and that's what I'm allowed to do. However, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make her look like a realistic painting. And so doing all those little things and checking your work throughout the entire process is what is going to give you the best, most realistic painting. And I'm telling you, I don't know if you've ever heard the, um, the phrase measure twice, cut once. That's um, like a woodworker's um, kind of whatever motto, mantra. My mom used to say that. And basically what that is saying is do the beginning steps really, really well and do them really correctly because trust me, if you give your model whole canned and you don't mean to or if you um, maybe don't get something quite right, her nose is off and you're like, oh, I'll just fix it later. Uh-uh, you won't. You won't. Those little things get worse and worse and worse and trust me, um, uh, you don't want to, this is something one of my art teachers told me, never fall in love with a piece of your artwork. And what that means is don't, don't find one little thing that you like at the expense of the rest of it. Because what happens, especially us being in like, you know, middle and high school, we'd be like, we draw the lips, but we draw them off to the side. And the teacher would be like, they're wrong. You got to erase them and move them over. And it's like, no, well, we really like that. I did a really good job on those lips. They look so pretty. They look beautiful. I don't want to erase it. And uh, actually, I had like a couple of teachers, so it was a she and a he that would be like, well, it doesn't matter. If you did it once, you can do it again. Like erase it, move it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if that little piece is good. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Nobody's going to look at that and be like, those lips are beautiful. They're going to be like, what's wrong with those lips? You know what I mean? So do it right from the beginning. Take your time. Make sure things are really lined up, measured exactly how you want them. Your version of correct is whatever your version of correct is. But make sure you get it right in that drawing. Like, as you can see, I've really kind of scruffled along with this one a little bit. And um, this one, I actually did a few drawings on another piece of paper and transferred and all this that. So you know, take your time, do what you need to do, get it right. Those three steps are going to really make your life so much easier. And, you know, I can't tell you when I was drawing this hand and fixing this one, I probably looked in the mirror eight times during that process. So keep that in mind. Anyways, I love you guys. I hope this has really been helpful. If it has, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really goes a long way for helping grow my channel and to make sure I see your lovely face again because, you know, I've been doing this artsy stuff. <laughs> Luckily for me, I look a bit younger than I actually am, but I've been doing this artsy stuff for a long time, and I really, really love to share it with you guys. So, mwah, you're amazing. And hey, how about this? Do me a favor. If you know anybody else that maybe this is helpful to, maybe you could give me a little share in one of my videos, maybe this week, maybe another video. That would be so awesome. If you guys just let me know and be like, hey, I shared you with a friend on Facebook, that would just make my little heart go kabam. So anyways, mwah, mwah, mwah. love you guys.